All right. I am ready. You got the clicker. You got the, uh, I've got the clicker. All right. Make sure that was in. Yep. We, we are full memorized. We're filming right now? We are filming right now. Okay. Okay, everybody. I'm going to give a presentation now to pretty much nobody unless anyone trickles in. And I'm giving this presentation come hell or high water because I was going to give this presentation this morning right after the eclipse uh, because this is one of the most important topics, I believe. A lot of people kept asking about this over and over. I'm calling this topic grassroots disclosure. Nothing is stopping us. And this was a presentation that Roger was going to give with me and we were going to go on a lot of different things. Uh, but discussing everything uh, that he's got in his experience on this topic. But uh, Roger obviously didn't hardly sleep last night, and now he's super busy also uploading other videos and editing videos and things. So Roger can't be here right now. So I'm going to give this presentation to pretty much nobody and uh, see if anybody hears me from the distance. That would be fun. Okay, this is super important. So this is a picture of me when I did the protests at the Shriver Air Force Base. Uh, this is the video that Corey Good was talking about recently. This is a screenshot from that. Um, and uh, that's the kind of slide, or that's the kind of sign that we were using. I'll talk about that near the end of the presentation, the idea of activism in the, in the sense of demonstrations, which is a very small portion of what I recommend people get involved in, because this is like, this is like a really nervous uh, situation for a lot of people. Don't want to necessarily be looking like you're an oppose, op opponent to something. You want to you have a nice, friendly group to start with to feel comfortable in. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about first. So what are we after, really? Now, the Full Disclosure Project mission statement, we, we wrote this together like 2015. No, it was early 2016 we wrote this. Full Disclosure Project is a nonprofit collective of transparency advocates focused on the release of advanced and improperly classified technologies that could immediately bring an end to the needless suffering of many, as well as an increased level of peace, prosperity, and equality for people around the world. And our main objectives are to make the mainstream public aware of the strong evidence that highly advanced technologies are currently being suppressed, work to release this technology fully, freely, and immediately, and seek a full disclosure of all unacknowledged programs. Now, we wrote this in 2016, but since that time, we've made a decision we're very likely, very, very likely going to start a nonprofit organization, and we will be revising this statement, and we'll make sure that it, it fits a, a slightly broader mission, and we also want to make sure that we have a clear vision statement that includes a spiritual objective for people that they can understand this is about gr the growth of, of the human spirit in some ways. This is not just about technology. However, starting with technology is extremely crucial because this is something that's understandable, it's approachable, and if we can get this, we get everything else in, in very short order. Um, so why does disclosure need to be from the grassroots level? Well, we know it hasn't worked yet from what their people are suggesting on the national level, but when, we're, when we get together as a group in small numbers, people can start to break out of their shells because they feel comfortable. It's like a friendly thing. We break through our programming more quickly when we're meeting in person. And doing activities in the physical world also is kind of a form of advertising, like a billboard. You know, it's not just somewhere boxed away on the internet. It's something that's out there in the open. People can come and watch you. And it's human nature to feel better when we're with friends. And there's also an exponential power in, in numbers that we can, that we can obtain. Uh, so more people working, the better for sure. Just sitting on your computer is not necessarily going to uh, contribute to the overall energy of this, of this shift. Uh, depends on what you're doing. Uh, so I recommend finding friends in, immediately. If anyone out there has not found friends local to them, at least two to three friends who they can talk to about disclosure, about the ET subject. You got to do that as soon as possible. So go to meetup.com right now. If you have never done it before, check out meetup.com. Find, uh, find and ver visit various groups that look like higher consciousness groups. Doesn't matter how weird it sounds, uh, just go there, start looking through. Um, also, to, to find groups, you can also look at uh, local community event boards, uh, sometimes there's online boards, sometimes you have to look at actual like new age centers, healing centers, spiritual uh, gift shops or whatever. You'll find interesting stuff at those places related to where people are gathering in your town. It doesn't have to be related to the, the, the shop. It, it's, there's many, many creative things people are doing already all around town that, that, that people would love to be involved in if they knew about it. There's just not, not very easy to find out about these things. Meetup.com is usually the best. So I would say find more friends like you right now locally. 
have, have at least one, in, one to two friends for sure you know who to, would, would attend meetings with you if you're going to start a meeting. Um, and I would say in order to get acquainted with others, I know a lot of people have a hard time opening up with topics. What you do is you start out just asking things like, you know, what's your journey? What was your path to get to where you are and uh, get to your, what, you, what, you, what you enjoy? What, 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 what would interest you? Um, ask what their most profound spiritual experiences were. This really opens up people a ton. And you'll find out very quickly if ET was in their story, if you seem relatively open-minded to begin with. And also let others know that the ET subject had a role in your awakening. And that, will, that, that way you can figure out how much they already know about the ET topic and, and if it really triggers something in them that they, they're, they're very passionate about. It. And then if you do find people like that, latch on to them and make sure they're your friends. Um, and also ask about Guy.com. Have you heard about Guy.com? Have you seen Cosmic Disclosure? Have you seen Wisdom Teachings? Yeah, that kind of thing is really easy to say right now. Uh, eventually express your interest to uh, your friends in starting a local extraterrestrial disclosure group, if none exists, and give them follow-up steps. Make sure people have a way to contact you. Make sure you can contact other people. After you go to these groups and you do make connections like this, uh, it's, uh, it's an important step. Uh, and then obviously decide what kind of group you want to create. Talk with your friends, see what they're interested in. Uh, pick a title for the group, something like ET Disclosure and Contact is what I chose because we also did the CE5 meditations in our group. We've been doing it for months. Or actually, we've been doing it for years. We do it once a month. Um, and then uh, some people like Roger were suggesting Full Disclosure Now is a group title. Meet Earth Cosmic Neighbors is a group on Facebook. They were starting meetup groups um, around the country. Um, you know, I, I recommend something like ET Disclosure because that's just kind of exactly direct about what you're talking about. Um, or you could, whatever you want to talk about, you can put that in the title. Um, and to a certain extent, you have to decide what your meetings should be about. If you want to do a lot of story sharing, that's always uh, a good way to get, get things going, um, sharing knowledge. You can give presentations, but I highly recommend having a group that is very, very discussion-oriented because you have to let other people give input. You have to let the discussion be free-flowing, not just coming from one person. If you really want to uh, network and get get the community integrated and active together. Um, it, it doesn't work so well with the groups that I've seen where there's just, just a lecture after lecture after lecture. That's, 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 that's helpful in some ways, but, but people kind of like get bored of that and they want to be able to engage. You got to give people opportunities to talk. And remember, you can do more and more for disclosure after you start to grow your group and your, and your circle grows bigger and bigger. Um, so don't worry if, if not much is happening with just five people if, if you're meeting with, with a small number of people. Um, um, so obviously meetup.com I'm saying is the best way to, to get a sheer number up, up, up to a certain uh, level because uh, meetup.com, you get all types of people looking uh, and um, there's so many categories. It's really great. You can type, type in a bunch of like, spirituality, metaphysics, and then anybody who has already liked those categories will find out about your group very quickly. Uh, so you know for sure uh, people who are on Meetup are going to be hearing about your group when you post it. Uh, I created a website, newearth.network. is a free alternative to meetup.com, which I would recommend everyone go use also right now because everyone who's listening to this is at least going to be able to go find each other, even if I don't have that site built up as much as meetup.com right now. Um, and I would say make sure to have a very, very good description on your meetup group to start with. Make sure to post links to evidence like the Disclosure Project. Uh, it's interesting, I put C. Seti Webb in the slide and that was taken down since I made this slide for some reason. So one of Stephen Greer's YouTube channels seems to have gone down, but his, his main channel is S. Disclosure now. Um, they have tons and tons of interviews, just like hard evidence kind of testimony. Uh, it's not woo-woo stuff. And that's the kind of thing I recommend linking to to get people thinking, hey, maybe there is evidence and I just haven't seen it on TV. Maybe it's really good. Um, so I would say mention spiritual intentions in some way in your description of your group uh, because that will latch on to a lot of other people. A lot of people will be intuitively driven to your group because you've been using spiritual language just a little bit. It doesn't have to be all spiritual, it, even if you just have one paragraph about how we value the spiritual progress of man and pursuing love and forgiveness. That's, that's, that's part of our mission that will really resonate with people if you make sure to keep that in your description. I would say you could wait till 25 members maybe show up on your meetup page before you start a host an event if you're, if you're not confident with starting with just friends, if you don't have friends that, that, you, that you know who are gonna come. Uh, because usually on meetup.com it's like, you know, most people who, who see an event don't really show up to your event. 
but uh, and there's also a problem where like usually like uh, or very often only half the people who RSVP to a group that's free uh, to an event will actually attend that event um, and it's just the nature of the way people use meetup.com they just kind of like you know shopping for something but don't get discouraged just because you start a meetup group and people don't attend um, because the numbers build very quickly and as soon as people know you and they want to be your friend then they will definitely attend your meetup groups uh, re repeatedly because this is something people are just dying to have as a meetup group dying to have a way to talk about the ET subject and there's just not enough groups it's just people are scared to form groups around this topic there's too much of a taboo we need to break the taboo we need to get groups going all around the country um, so if you have to and there's other groups um, maybe there's like a really massive group and you've met some of the people there and they're like really excited about that group even if it's not related to ETs you can say hey I'd like to host a meeting about ETs with your group you can become a co-organizer of the group and say just, just say I'll just take full responsibility for a meeting if uh, if you let me do it with your group um, so that's that's a convenient way to get bootstrapped into another community um, very quickly uh, always be seeking to network with other groups and expand your connections amicably because there are so many smart people in just everywhere doing all types of great groups so just keep going to those groups too keep meeting people and keep networking and you can really uh, develop your your own ET disclosure network locally much quicker uh, and make sure you're very consistent in, in whatever you offer to do I would say finding venues is a very significant topic too um, uh, like we use a library we, we found that the, a particular public library seems to work well um, and people also like feel like oh hey this is not like a crazy group because they're actually in a library it's not like sometimes people have trouble with like a church and sometimes people aren't comfortable offering their homes although those are options very often there's many many types of facilities you can find for free uh, to use for groups um, I wouldn't say rule out meeting homes but I would say probably don't do it to start with you know you don't really know what's going to happen uh, but don't really have to be afraid generally um, you usually want a room that supports at least 10 8 to 10 people for your first meeting sometimes restaurants coffee shops works fine uh, and also you want to look at other meetup groups histories to figure out what their venues have been in the past see if they've had really neat venues that you hadn't thought of and that's that's usually really really reliable to figure out what's a good meeting venue where are the people meeting their, with their meetup groups um, remember that uh, many many types of public facilities generally have websites with a web page that lets you reserve spaces you can reserve park spaces you can reserve community centers even libraries museums churches and schools you know all, all these all these options are are something to look into look at their websites see if there's something there um, and call them up if you if you have to even the chamber of commerce or tourism board in your local town might have more information about good good venues but I'm just telling you right now coffee shops restaurants libraries seem to be the easiest um, never underestimate the wills the wisdom of the elders in your community you're gonna get a lot of great feedback always expect the unexpected feedback uh, always be asking for feedback venues timing meeting format ask about how you're doing what other people recommend especially people who've been doing it for a while meeting going to a lot of groups and stuff um, ask what people like to do and always ask you know what, what they like about your your meetings um, uh, and I would recommend as far as meeting at least meet monthly don't ever say we're gonna do just a weekly meeting because generally people are not able to meet weekly consistently but they are able to meet monthly consistently um, so I would say people are going to get worn down too much if you start with a monthly thing even though you can do more than one type of thing I would say I always have at least one strong big thing monthly like like a discussion group monthly um, and I would say make sure people are given clear information in your uh, event descriptions about parking clear information about any needs for donations if you do have any costs um, I would say don't don't charge you know directly charge money uh, say a donation is, is recommended if you need a donation I mean it's sometimes it's better not to bother with that um, and I would say don't stress the content of your meetings if you're gonna host a meeting just uh, throw all your apprehensions out the window because people just love to have a chance to talk about this kind of stuff all types of weird topics that they're interested in that they haven't had anybody who's open to talk to about so you don't have to worry so much about being really professional and having a great structured meeting because people bring 
the material of the meeting. It's not, it's not you. It, it's much, much better to use your intuition to just let things, let things happen. However, there are some things you want to make sure you do. You know, you, you want to make sure that there's a, a, a you, you specify at the, at the beginning of the meeting, this is the, the general thing I intend to do. I let you, I'm going to let everyone share their stories. We're going to share our names first. And then we're going to uh, see if there's any particular topics that we're, that we're interested in, in, in talking about and, and going deeper on. Um, and if you have anything about like recent events, like uh, you know the news about the Nazca mummy or something like that, that's that's always good to throw in there. Make sure you have a little bit of something to get people uh, realizing this this is this is substantive discussion. This is really exciting that we're in the that we're in the thick of this kind of process uh, where where everybody's working towards disclosure, and 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 we're we're able to be a part of it. Um, you could ask questions to get people going when we have a meeting, like what, what drew you to the group? What interests you about the UFO subject? And that kind of thing opens people up a little bit more uh, right away to explaining uh, what their thoughts are on the topic and then you can figure out where the common threads are and continue talking about those. Um, watch for a core team to form. This is kind of uh, important for doing more than just a simple meeting. Uh, and this is something that you know I learned over time is that if you have enough meetings you'll start to recognize some people are way more into it than others and the people who are really into it eventually you want to make sure you contact them privately and say I'm interested in meeting with you privately and make sure that you can you, you guys can talk about what should we do besides the regular group and make sure that they feel a part of the planning process and, and develop a core team this way make sure that you have a team of people who can help help guide you because it's, it's very often hard to just do this as, as alone to really get you know forced to be reckoned with together if you're just organizing everything alone make sure you have co-organizers or people who are at least willing to uh, talk to you about uh, the the format of the group the structure of the group and other types of meetings events and but potentially even like uh, activism type of things demonstrations anything you, you can think of that you're all interested in doing uh, and yeah, you can brainstorm at these other beings that you, you might want to have for the core team. Lots of brainstorming is, is pretty important. Um, and make sure that you have a way to keep people up to speed uh, on all these complex subjects that relate to disclosure. And I'm going to dovetail into a, a few things here with, with this idea. Uh, but, but definitely remember that some people might not be believing what you believe. And so always clarify that others are free to have their own beliefs and that that's not, we don't have to have, like, to have one, one type of topic. We don't have to talk about Corey Good uh, and, and expect you to believe Corey Good. Uh, although if people are interested in that, that, that's what people can talk about. That's not, that's not an issue. It shouldn't be an issue. Um, talk about whatever you want to talk about and just, just kind of um, make sure that the group is, is relatively balanced and, and who's allowed to talk and how long they're allowed to talk for, that kind of thing. Um, Figure out areas you need to dis agree to disagree on and make sure you're explicit about that. Okay, maybe we'll have to agree to disagree on that. Um, you can mention your favorite videos. Uh, collect email addresses from people because meetup.com doesn't give you their email address. Collect the, the email addresses from people and then send out more links via email. Whenever somebody mentions a link, hey, I think everyone should watch this, you can send it out by email really quick. Something like uh, mailchimp.com works great for that. Um, easily sending out a large number of emails or you just use BCC on, on your email client or your program on your computer or whatever. Uh, I would say start a Facebook page eventually or a blog to help share more, share more information, let more people contribute when you're not having a meeting, just, just online. Share books with people, figure out who reads the most and who has read the most already and always be talking with them about books. Uh, share DVDs and burn DVDs. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. And of course, be accepting of all beliefs and recognize that a group consensus may form and sadly some will not be able to continue with the group as a result of their sacred cows because some people just can't deal with certain things you might be talking about and that's okay. Uh, some people will not be able to go along with, with, with the group and uh, you shouldn't get hung up if somebody that you, you thought was going to be a, a good, good team member maybe decided that it wasn't right for them. But, but that's just how it goes. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, DVD videos. So obviously we know it's, it's, it's for most people it's easy to watch uh, videos on the computer, um, but for some people it's much much easier to watch DVD videos. 
Um, and this is partly because it's more accessible to some people who maybe don't have the right hardware, they don't have a, uh, you know, something to plug into their TV, um, and they don't, have a, they don't enjoy watching something on a computer screen for a long period of time. People who plug something into, into the DVD player that's connected to a TV are much more likely to feel comfortable sitting there for like an hour and really soaking in information. Um, so there, there's definitely advantages to DVDs. I would call it the lowest common denominator for sharing basic educational information. And it's also really cool that DVDs are like a tangible reminder. Oh, look at that. It's sitting over there. I should, still, I should watch that. I never watched that yet. It's like you have to do something with it. You can't, just, you, can, you can't just be totally out of your mind because it's somewhere physically around you. So that's another advantage. Uh, and also DVDs can be re-gifted. That's so, so critical. You can give out uh, DVDs you can, to, to one person and then they just go spreading to all that person's friends and family. And it's, and it's amazing how, how much you can spread information just with a, a few DVDs. Um, uh, but obviously, you do want to make sure that uh, you're encouraging people to check out YouTube videos if, if that's much more convenient for them and let them know how to do that too. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about making DVDs because this is such a big part of what I do with my local group in Colorado Springs. Um, I usually give out like 10 things every month, but like eight of them I've already given out. So most people don't take those, those eight. Um, but since I've been doing this so long, I'm getting really good at it. I've, I've made a website, disclosureinstitute.org. You can go there and download the DVDs that I've been producing and uh, also the flyers we've been using, like the, the, the protests we did. Um, but one, one thing I want to point out is that uh, there's like a two-step process to download DVDs because they're like four gigabyte files. It takes a long time to download. And it's, it's kind of expensive for somebody hosting uh, large files. So you use BitTorrent to make it so it's uh, easy to share in a peer-to-peer a -peer network. Uh, so I recommend learning a little bit about BitTorrent um, because that's just, it's kind of the grassroots way to share very large files. It's, it's really essential uh, kind of tool. Uh, but it, it's not that hard. I would recommend go to get, get the program called QBitTorrent, and that's the one that is uh, very reliable. It works on every platform. It's not going to spam your computer or anything. You just download that program, and then as soon as you go to disclosureinstitute.org, you can click on the torrent links, which then downloads the DVD ISO file. The DVD ISO file is what you can click on on your, on your computer, and then that burns it onto a DVD as long as you put in a blank DVD into a DVD burner. Uh, there are also programs that um, make it easier to burn DVDs, such as a program that will let you, um, many programs will let you say, I want to burn 10 DVDs, and then as soon as one is done, the, the tray opens, take out that DVD, put it down, take another one, put it back in, close it, and then it starts burning the next one. So that's like the quickest way I found with only one drive to burn 10 DVDs fairly quickly. Uh, just look for the open drive, pop in a new one. So I've burned like thousands of DVDs this way now, given out uh, thousands of DVDs over the, over the last 10 years, um, more so in the last two years since I started this group. And the DVDs are really awesome for people. Um, and, and obviously for demonstrations, I would say it's extremely, extremely helpful. Okay, so remember with the, with the things you're recommending, you want to make sure you have a kind of variety of materials for people to get educated with because some people are more interested in just the nuts and bolts, ET and UFO evidence. Some people are just curious about like spiritual metaphysical stuff. Uh, some people are going to be really benefited by hearing about consciousness scientists and recognizing there is something that validates their, their suspicions about the nature of psychic phenomenon. And some people are just curious, okay, tell me what's going on for, for uh, the bigger picture. Uh, and uh, so I've got like 14 DVDs that usually I would say are, are good, good uh, groundwork for people to recognize something through all these categories. Uh, some DVDs I give out are basically like two hours, and some of them are actually have like six hours of content. Like, for example, the Citizens Hearing on Disclosure is on there. That was five days of testimony given in front of uh, a number of uh, former congressmen. And so I, I managed to compress it so that uh, one full day of testimony, like six hours of content is, content, is compressed onto one DVD. And I don't think that's been done before, and I think that's really helpful 
to get a lot of really good information out to people. Um, and you know, DVD, USB DVD burners, if you don't have a DVD burner, it's only like 25 bucks. You can plug in a, a DVD burner drive into your computer very, very easily. Um, and then there's two different types of DVDs. That are blank DVDs, you can buy DVD minus R's, DVD plus R's, it doesn't matter which kind you get. You can buy 100 of them for 25 bucks, 20 to five, 25 cents per DVD. It's not that bad. Um, and uh, I recommend it. Okay, labeling. I just use regular mailing labels. It's really simple. Uh, DVD sleeves. You need to make sure you buy what's called DVD sleeves when you also start burning DVDs. And you can get a thousand of those for twenty dollars on Amazon too. It's super cheap. So this is a really convenient process. Um, so I'm going to move into what happens in your group. Uh, generally, you want to make sure that people feel comfortable pretty much no matter what's, being, what's going on. Expect people to have trouble getting along, but remind people that our ability to get along is the most important thing and that we do have to agree to disagree. And if you are un emotionally unaffected by the conflict that you might come across in your groups, that's just a great example for others to also be unemotional about anybody who's having a hard time with a topic or a person or whatever. It's usually uh, something that you can work through. Just don't hold any sacred cows yourself. Don't hold on to something so tightly that you say, well, I know for sure I'm right. Be willing to say, I don't, I'm not totally sure. I can never be totally sure. And that, that helps people appreciate that you're open and, and, and then they feel comfortable in your group. Um, always be accepting of others regardless of anything else going on. And peace will inevitably return to your group if, if you have a difficult situation rise. Uh, we'd be flexible with people, uh, people's time, and uh, thank people. Thank people for helping you if they do. Um, be ready for a change in your group. Be flexible to allow anybody to leave the group, take a break. Don't get, don't get stressed if somebody says, well, I just, I just can't do it right now. Uh, young people uh, can seem more motivated and energized, but old people can seem more dependable and consistent. This is something I've noticed. So, so, so don't worry if, uh, you know, if somebody's flaky on you. It's just the nature of, of humanity right now. Uh, people have a lot of going on. It's, it's, it's difficult to, be, uh, to make sure you have a, a good team uh, that's always going to be there for you. But uh, when you do find those people who are always there for you, just, just remember, make sure that, that, they, that you can contact them privately and even meet with them privately because they, seem, they, they might be uh, good people to do more planning with about what, what, what really could be uh, a much more solid foundation of, a, of an organization that could really, that could really move things in a, in a bigger direction than just, just a few meetings. Um, I, I don't know what that could look like for you. Um, for my group, it turned into things like uh, c c demonstrations at the Air Force Base and things like that. Um, and it, uh, there's other ideas I'll talk about uh, towards the end on that, on that topic. Um, so just respect everyone's paths and don't make any conclusions based on ages or types of people who, who may be attending your meetings. Um, rec recognize some people out there are insanely intuitive. Uh, they spend a lot of their time meditating. Sometimes retired people have a lot more time to meditate. Uh, and some people are professional psychics, and they just like can see the energy. They know what's going to happen and be open-minded to receive a lot of feedback from people who seem very intuitive. And always remember to ask for input, advice, and guidance. Um, And uh, sometimes you just have to go for it. This is a couple of pictures from the demonstrations we did at the uh, Space Symposium, Colorado Springs. Uh, well, these were two different years at Space Symposium. Um, yeah, and I, uh, you know, we discuss what to use, put on signs. Usually, something generic like "Acknowledge Space Program Whistleblowers" uh, is is usually something uh, people will, you know, not freak out about. However, I, f I do feel like using something a little bit more direct. Talking about UFO lies are different at every level. Your hubris keeps UFO tech secret. I, I felt like I wanted to be a little bit more creative with signs and seeing if I get an emotional reaction out of people. Because some people out there, uh, such as military contractors, do know that there are a lot of UFO related lies go out there. And you do get some interesting reactions. Like when we did these protests, 
we had some people who definitely seemed like they knew what, knew what was going on. And uh, uh, even some, we had even some four-star generals walking by uh, who gave some, some nods, and it was interesting. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, some people definitely stated things that were uh, more direct, like, yeah, I know, and uh, I'm the guy you're protesting about. Uh, that, that happened a couple times, and it's interesting. Uh, so there is, there is a small chance, you know, if, if you play your cards right, you can draw out whistleblowers too uh, by, by targeting the right people during demonstrations. Um, and we do, we have, on our group, we have had some people show up who definitely have very classified information and definitely didn't want it out public. So it's like you make your own little disclosure project group in your community if you're, if you're getting the right type of military people showing up. And yeah, I don't even know how much I should share about the, there's a lot that validates what's, what's being said about people, testimony like Henry Deacon, Pete Peterson. There's, there's a lot of good uh, testimony out there from people who maybe just don't want to go public yet. And uh, don't underestimate your own ability to do what uh, David Wilcock does and just interview random insiders because they're out there. Um, make the signs pretty big. That's my only recommendation right there. Uh, and then also, I, we tried to use two-sided signs because there were people looking at us two different directions. I recommend using shipping tubes for your uh, uh, s sticks because that's always legal no matter where you are. And I just attach it with steel wire, the, the cardboard. I just use, uh, you know, cardboard boxes from Walmart. It's really easy to make signs. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, you want to make sure you have a kind of solid inner circle to help you plan things, make sure they're going to be there for you. And also, different people are into different things. Uh, and, and some people are going to be more interested in meditation groups. Make sure you have uh, a, a circle of friends that you can meet privately just for really good, intense meditation. Um, and in a home environment, is usually pretty good. Usually there's a, a good atmosphere there. Um, some people are, you know, nervous if you have like a... For the, for the first thing you post up publicly, you say, meet at my home. So people don't like, generally don't like offering their home. But once you get to know people, then you know, okay, this, per this person is trustworthy. I can invite them to my home for meditation thing. And that's, that's a fun way to do it. Um, and there's also some people more interested in activism. And uh, don't bother the people who aren't interested, interested in activism. Because uh, <laughs> you can piss them off if you, if you push too much in one direction or another. Um, yeah, don't be pushy ever, but make sure people who are interested, you give them opportunities to, to do more. Um, make sure people feel trusted and valued for what they can offer. Um, so I'm going to point out one other idea uh, quickly, which is that I, I was really inspired by the vision of unity in the community that Corey Good was pushing and promoting for a while there in 2016. And um, not only did I make the website New Earth Network to try to promote unity in the community, I realized I would want to start a group deliberately to unify other groups in my community. And for that, I created an idea that I called the New Earth Council. And I would recommend people who have done a group for a while, consider this kind of thing. Once you've done enough networking in your town, consider reaching out to other local group organizers, uh, spiritual leaders in your area, and ask them something like, right here, which is what I, I sent out initially this email to people, and I got a good response from a number of people. I said, inspired by calls for unity in the community as being essential to the stable foundation of a new earth, a vision I, that I believe we share in common, I am emailing to invite a handful of spiritual teachers and friends in Colorado Springs, including yourself, to work with me on forming a local new earth council experiment. Over time, I would like to learn more about your needs and challenges relating to operating effectively in our current society where many new concepts are often dismissed or understood. I'm interested in meeting together to find out what we can do together that we could not do separately to bring in the New Earth consciousness faster and more smoothly. I'm interested in discussing ways to bring greater unity across all other New Earth, new earth focused groups through networking, shared educational resources, and information tools, and anything else we can think of. As the Earth's transition could lead us to unexpected bumps in the road, the divisiv divisiveness of the election cycle being a possible example, this was before Trump was elected, I am interested in making sure we can support our community all as one through any confusing and catalytic events. I would like the unseen spiritual hierarchies that guide us already and have led us to know each other to have more of a representative presence within the visible earth plane 
in the form of a decision-making or thought-joining collective. Some of these ideas probably could have been simplified, and you can do whatever you want, obviously. I, I, I wrote this email to get to, to gauge interest, and uh, uh, we have a, a vision, uh, a, a slightly longer mission and vision statement now on newearthcouncil.org, where I kind of expanded on some of these ideas. And we, we do meet monthly, and we do talk about all types of problems in the community relating to higher consciousness groups and the struggles that metaphysical practitioners go through. It's very similar to the struggle that people who are interested in extraterrestrials might go through because there's a lot of difficulty dealing with friends and family on certain topics. And we can all kind of band together. And uh, you give out DVDs to this group as well, and they'll, they'll be brought on board pretty quickly about the, DVD, the ET subject too. So um, I'm not quite sure how far we're going to go with, with this New Earth Council experiment I created, but we are planning on making a kind of uh, shared spiritual center for more people in the area and that's also a great way that we can distribute more information about disclosure and uh, at least have a kind of headquarters for a lot of our operations. Um, so I would recommend to stay very focused once you do start a group. Make sure you're meeting at least once a month with no exceptions. Uh, always have separate discussions with those in your group and maintain friendly connections. Make sure that um, there is an opportunity for more people to come in and, and talk to you. Um, eventually create a, a mission and goal, goal statements if, if uh, you have other people who are more of an inner circle with you and keep talking about them. And I would say the last thing about this is make sure that you can keep people's interest. Um, staying connected with your aware and awake friends makes it easy to stay interested yourself in maintaining your group. Um, Plan creative activities beyond the usual activities if you have to. Go hiking if you have to, to make sure that the bond is strengthened. All types of things you can think of if uh, this will help uh, the group um, continue to grow and discuss more and more. Uh, make sure others are inspired themselves and share what excites you and always ask others to share what they're interested in researching and make sure that you're staying connected on the topics that are valuable. Uh, Learn and teach about current events and uh, keep recognizing and pointing out that there's too much going on for them to miss out on. And that, that really helps people appreciate that this is something I really want to be involved in. This is really important to keep going to, keep going to the groups and keep, keep, uh, keep the energy high. Um, so that was all I, I planned for that. That's, uh, that's my talk. Thanks.